Hi everyone, I'm just making a video on how I reflowed my um, GPU on the HP DB9000 series laptop. Now, I bought the 17 inch, there's the box here, this is the motherboard. Now in this video, I'm not going to show how to take the motherboard out or how to put it back together, but I just wanted to explain the actual process of the reflow and the other option. Now I bought my laptop, I think it was 2007, and I had it for a few years and I had no problems and I did use a fan um, sometimes to help cool it and I never had a problem with the laptop up until just about a year ago. Now I researched a lot of the sites and YouTube had a lot of good videos on how to fix this and the most common one is a reflow. This is the problem with my motherboard here and I've already had this all apart. I've already reflowed this chip, but this chip here, the GPU, um, is the one the chip that came um, unsoldered. Now, what they mean by reflow um, is that this is a surface-mounted chip here, and because it's soldered down, all the contacts are on the uh, bottom of the chip, and they solder right onto the motherboard. And so what happened was with this heat sink design here, this here uh, is what cools your CPU, which this one's the CPU, and then this is the GPU. So the heat from the CPU comes across, and then, and then the GPU picks up also and goes through the heat sink and into the fan. So this CPU is heating up really hot, and it's putting a lot of heat onto the GPU as well. So... And what they used was this little piece of, uh, it's like a foam, I'm not sure what it is, but it transfers the heat from the GPU to the heat sink, to this copper here. So the most common fix for this, and the easiest way, is to reflow this. And I'll explain what that is. So I have an old motherboard here. This one's just out of a desktop computer. And I'll show you a surface-mounted chip. And I have unsoldered one over here just to show you and this one here if you can see right there is where another service mounted chip was and this is where I unsoldered this chip uh, for the test um, to see how long um, to do this so now what happened to the GPU is it either heated up so hot it fractured one of the solder joints. Now these are the solder joints here that are on the that were on the chip, and one of them heated up and either fractured from from expanding and contracting. So a reflow is just heating up this chip hot enough for these solder joints to melt. So they're reflowing. The solder is then flowing again, reconnecting the broken solder joint and then allowed to cool and then it will work again the contact will be um, reconnected but unfortunately this is not a permanent fix the chip could then heat up again and could fracture again the solder joint so the better uh, fix for this is a reball so a reflow versus a reball now with the reflow, all you're going to be doing is heating this chip up and until the solder melts and then allowing it to cool and the solder joint will then be reconnected. But unfortunately, with a lot of the laptops nowadays uh, or electronics, uh, they use lead-free solder. And, and what I've been reading is that the lead-free solder can't take the heat as well as the with solder with lead. So... What you'd be doing is, if you're going to do this properly, you would then want to do a reball, and a reball consists of removing the chip, removing all the solder, all this remaining solder on the chip and on the motherboard, and then you'd be placing a stencil. Let's say this was the stencil here. This would have then multiple holes. It would have a couple hundred holes in it that line up with every little little contact area on the chip. Then this would be laid on top of the chip, and the balls would then be poured on. The balls you can buy, they come in a, a little tube, and you pour the balls onto the stencil, and then you'd heat up the stencil in the chip, and the balls would then bond to the, 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 
the chip here, and then the entire thing, sense would be taken off, and the entire thing would then be laid onto the motherboard in the corresponding area, and then it would be heated again with a heat lamp, and the temperature's monitored, and then the balls would then melt, and this would bond uh, permanently down to the laptop. And that is the better fix. So before I did my reflow, I took this old motherboard here as just a test to see how long it would take to melt the solder on this chip. And then that would give me an idea of how long I'd want to heat up my good laptop board. Now, I'm not going to show how to reflow uh, the chip because I've already done it and there's lots of videos on doing that but I'll just show you how I um, did it quickly and now this is the foil that I use it's just a uh, heavy duty foil and I didn't use a big piece I just put the foil around the area because you really don't have to wrap the motherboard in, in completely in foil because you're only heating the one area and the foil re will reflect the heat so I'll just take a little piece of foil here and show you on this old motherboard here. Basically, I just laid the foil over, and I just took my finger and I rubbed it along the chip. Just think of this as being the GPU, and that just gave me an outline. And then the easiest way to do this is just hold your foil and take your fingernail and just go along the edge of the chip. And that's what I did if you have fingernails if you grow them long enough then you can you can do this so I just cut them cut out the little piece and then you can just pull this out like that pull off the foil like this and then you have the perfect little um, cover to go around the chip to cover all the circuitry so there you go, and I tucked it around like that. Pretty simple. And then try to keep the foil right tight down to the motherboard on the edges here, right in right in behind the chip, right like beside the chip. And then I taped the, fo the foil down with a few pieces of tape just to keep it in place. And the next step is what I did was I used the heat gun. And so I have my heat gun here. It has two settings, a high and low. And the low setting is up to 250 degrees. So I use the low setting. And you can just let the heat gun uh, warm up a little bit before you do this. And I just took the heat gun and I just put it over top of the chip. And basically, I kept it about an inch away from the chip. And I heated slowly. And it took about three minutes for the chip to then come off of the board. So that gave me um, a perfect time to heat up my... Now, they also recommend to replace this little piece of um, whatever it is, foam or uh, foam rubber, that was used to transfer the heat from the chip to the uh, heat sink with a piece of copper. And, or a piece of cop, a little copper pieces. So what I've done is I took a piece of copper here, I had some scrap copper, and I cut it into two squares exactly the same size of the foam. And that'll give me the right thickness. I'll find out after I put this thing together. I'd be careful with this shim uh, because if you put it into, the, into there and it's not a little bit snug against the heat sink, it could, it could come dislodged and then short out and destroy the laptop. So I'd be careful using that. So I tested the board and I just dropped the board back into here, connected up the uh, these plugs here. Also, you have to connect the uh, monitor plugs, the display plugs, I mean, this one as well. And also a few of, I connected a few of these um, plugs back in, these cables here because it would not turn on just to test it. So once you do that, and then I fired it up, and it worked fine. So now I'm just going to put the laptop back together. Well, I put the computer all back together, and I'm just hoping that it works now. It did work um, when I tested it, so let's see what happens. So we have lights. I'm just going to kill the light.
light in here. And there we go. Now before I put the computer back together, I figured I would drill a few holes in the bottom. They're kind of rough. I really don't care this is an old laptop and I'd rather it working, um, you know, last as long as it can than worrying about a couple holes in the bottom. But I drilled some holes just underneath where the GPU is on the heatsink. So I'm hoping that that'll allow a little air to get through and it'll help cool the, um, the laptop. Well, that was just a video on reflowing my HP DV9000 GPU chip. Thank you for watching.